Today we're dealing with equations of motion and we'll call it part two. Um, this is because we're dealing with equations of motion and looking at them on the normal and tangential coordinates and also kinetics of particles on cylindrical coordinates. All right, so our first example, an 800 kilogram car is traveling over a hill with the shape of a parabola. When the car is at point A, its velocity is 9 meters per second and a sub t is 3 meters per second squared. So let's neglect the size of the car. We're asked to find the resultant normal force and resultant frictional force exerted on the road at point A by the car. So in doing that we come up with a plan and there's things we need to do. So first we'll treat the car as a particle and then we'll draw its free body diagram and then we'll draw its um, kinetic diagram All right. and then after that we'll apply the equations of motion and we'll apply them in the NT and when we see NT we mean normal and tangential directions and then three, we're gonna use our trusty calculus to determine the slope and the radius. The slope and the radius of the curvature. And we're gonna do this at point A. So the normal tangential coordinate system can be established on this vehicle at point A. So we treat the vehicle as a particle and then draw the free body diagram and the kinetic diagrams. All right, so given that we have W equals mg, right? And this is the weight of the car. Uh, N for us will be the resultant normal force resultant normal force and then we have F F is for us going to be the resultant friction force and that's the resultant friction force on the road next we go ahead and apply the equations of motion in the normal tangential directions so we say the sum of f sub n equals m a sub n and that goes to w cosine theta minus n equals m a sub n next we go ahead and apply the equations of motion in the normal tangential directions so we say the sum of f sub n equals m a sub n and that goes to w cosine theta minus n equals m a sub n today we're dealing with equations of motion and we'll call it part two um, this is because we're dealing with equations of motion and looking at them on the normal and tangential coordinates and also kinetics of particles on cylindrical coordinates. All right, so our first example, an 800 kilogram car is traveling over a hill with the shape of a parabola. When the car is at point A, its velocity is nine meters per second and a sub t is three meters per second squared. So let's neglect the size of the car. We're asked to find the resultant normal force and resultant frictional force exerted on the road at point A by the car. So in doing that we come up with a plan and there's things we need to do. So first we'll treat the car as a particle and then we'll draw its free body diagram and then we'll draw its um, kinetic diagram. All right, and then 
after that we'll apply the equations of motion and we'll apply them in the NT and when we see NT we mean normal and tangential directions and then three we're gonna use our trusty calculus to determine the slope and the radius the slope and the radius of the curvature and we're going to do this at point A so the normal tangential coordinate system can be established on this vehicle at point A so we treat the vehicle as a particle and then draw the free body diagram and the kinetic diagrams all right so given that we have w equals mg right and this is the weight of the car uh, n for us will be the resultant normal force the resultant normal force and then we have F. F is for us going to be the resultant friction force. And that's the resultant friction force on the road. Next, we go ahead and apply the equations of motion in the normal tangential directions. So we say the sum of F sub N equals M. A sub n and that goes to W cosine theta minus n equals M A sub n using W equals M G um, and also A sub n is equal to V squared uh, divided by Rho equals 9 squared divided by Rho. Okay, so this for us yields our 800 times 9.81 cosine theta minus n, and then that's equal to 800 times 81 divided by row and then we go to n is equal to 7848 cosine theta and this is minus 64800 divided by rho so this would be equation one for us we go to the sum of F sub T equals M A sub T. That's W times sine theta minus F equals M A sub T. Um, using W equals M G and A sub T this time equals three uh, meters per second squared, which is given. We have for us yielding 800 times 9.81 sine theta minus F, and it's equal to 800 times 3. So we yield F equals 7848, 7848 times sine theta minus 2400. So this is equation two. All right, so what we can consider our third part is to determine rho. And we do this by differentiating. Um, differentiate y equals fx at x equals 80 meters. All right, so y equals 20 times 1 minus x squared divided by 6400 alright and that yields 
to dy dx equals negative 40 x divided by 6400 all right and then we go to d squared y or dx squared all right and that's going to be for us negative 40 divided by 6400 Okay, so rho at x equaling 80 meters is going to be equal to 1 plus dy dx squared, and then that's raised to the 3 halves. That's over d2y dx2. So then that will be equal to, it looks to be 1 plus a negative 0 0.5 squared to the 3 halves. And that's all over 0 0.00625. Okay, and then that's going to come out to 233.6. All right, so then we can determine determine uh, theta, determining theta from the slope of the curve at A. All right, so if we do that, dy dx is theta. We can say tan theta equals dy um, dx. x is equal to 80 meters. Okay, so theta equals inverse tan of dy dx. And then that's equal to inverse tan of negative 0 0.5, which will be 26.6 degrees. All right, so now we can say from, from equation 1, we have n equals 7848 cosine theta minus 64,800 divided by rho. So that's going to equal 7848 cosine of 26.6 that we just found degrees minus 64,800 divided by 233.6. And that's 6,728 newtons. All right, and then from equation two, we had F is equal to 7,848 sine theta minus 2,400. So that's 7,848 sine and theta we said was 26.6 degrees minus 2400 so then that gets us 1114 newtons okay in our next example we're given that the 10 kilogram ball has a velocity of three meters per second when it is at a along the vertical path so we're asked to find the tension in the cord and the increase in the speed of the ball. Okay, so we're gonna plan it out. And in planning, number one, we state that since the problem involves a curved path and requires finding the force perpendicular to the path, we use NT coordinates, right? What we've been doing, normal tangential coordinates. 
um, we draw the ball's free body diagram and also the kinetic diagram. Then we apply the equation of motion in the normal tangential directions. All right, let's get started. Oh, so we have drawn the free body diagram and then we have the kinetic diagram. So the free body diagram and the kinetic diagram. So now we move on and go ahead and apply the equations of motion in the normal tangential directions. So we'll say, let's call it A is some of the forces N sub N equals MA sub N. So that yields us T minus W sine 45 degrees which is equal to MA sub N. All right, so we're gonna use um, A sub N equaling V squared over rho equals three squared over two. Okay, and then we're gonna use W equals 10 times 9.81 Newtons and M equals 10 kilograms. All right, so this yields us T minus 98.1 sine 45 degrees is going to be equal to 10 times three squared over two. And then T, solving for T, we'll get 114 Newtons. All right, and then we'll say B, the sum of the forces, sub T equals MA sub T. So that yields for us, W cosine 45 degrees equals MA sub T. All right, yielding 98.1 cosine 45 degrees equals 10 A sub T. All right, and then we can get A sub T by stating that it's dv over dt, which is 6.94 meters per second squared.